In this lesson we'll discuss how we can create new forms from our polygons by using the extrude tool. Alright, so in the last lesson we had created the major form and we had gotten into how to create segments across our object and the different ways that we can create segments. So now what we want to do is we want to start to create different forms off of this. So for our example, what we want to do is we want to create the truck mounts here. Now we're only worried about this specific portion right here, the rectangular portion. We're not worried about these triangles that are coming off the edges there. There's a different way of dealing with those. Alright, so let's go ahead and minimize this and let's extrude that polygon out. So it's important to remember that you want to prepare your polygons before you extrude. So one thing that uh, tends to uh, trip someone up who is still unclear about segments and how polygons work exactly is we have the shape that we want here but we don't exactly have all the segments that we need. So if I were to come in and use the extrude tool so I could use it by activating it and then left clicking and dragging on this polygon and I can pull that out and you'll see that it comes all the way out but that doesn't match our concept here okay so looking at our concept you can see that it's being extruded out from this corner to this corner so what happened exactly well we have the segments that go across the top and we have the segments that go across the bottom but we don't have the segments that go across the front and the back so we need to finish preparing that polygon so let's go ahead and turn off extrude and we're going to undo uh, let's just do one time there and now what we want to do is we want to create the segments across the front and the back of that so the tool that we could use for this um, and my suggestion would be to use the slice plane so the slice plane let's go ahead and um, rotate it around and let's go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees okay so let's go to our front view by hitting F and you'll see that it's kind of off here it's not exactly matching up with our angle properly so let's go to local on that rotation and we can actually type in the value here along the bottom so let's type in 0 and that will go back to its original position now let's go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees okay so you'll see that it's straight up and down and I can go ahead and move this across and let me turn on vertex mode so we can see a preview of that slice plane so let's try that one more time there we go and we're gonna go right across the front here and we're gonna go to right about here and we're gonna hit slice to make that segment and then we're gonna go across the back to right about here and we'll hit slice again so now if I hit P on the keyboard to go to my perspective view I've created that polygon on this side now one important thing to remember is that we need to be building on this side as well so don't forget about that so now let's go to polygon mode and select those two polygons on each side and we're going to extrude those out so let's go ahead and hit extrude and I'm going to use the settings this time because I have two different polygons that are being used and I'm going to extrude those out and let's go to let's say 5 on our value here and we'll go up a little bit higher I think so we'll go to about um, let's say let's say 6 on that I want that to be a little larger now in this case we might have a couple of issues uh, with the overall size of those those pieces there I don't think they're quite tall enough and I don't think they're quite long enough here so once we start building in some of these different forms you'll see that um, if we don't get those polygons prepared properly at the very beginning uh, it can be difficult to um, edit that form now it's not impossible it's definitely um, doable we can definitely work with it it just makes things a little bit harder um, the more details you get so you can definitely see why we say work large to small when using box modeling methods so to change the shape of this let's go to vertex mode and I'm going to select the vertices right across the bottom of this and you'll see that I use that 
region selection to select all of those vertices in that line. And I'm going to drop that down, make that a little bit taller there. Actually, let's pull it back up just a little bit. That might have got a little too much. And then we want to lengthen out back here. Now, looking at that, let's go ahead and pull that back. Now, one thing that I want you to notice is that we're kind of tearing up the top edge of our dumpster, and that could be an issue. So, if we pull that out or we push that in, you can see that it's um, changing the topology across the top. Now, it's perfectly fine down here because those lines are perfectly straight across in the world axis. Because this is at a diagonal angle, that could be a little bit of an issue. So make sure you hit undo or control Z a couple of times to get back to that original position. Now in order to get past this problem, what we can do is constrain the sub-objects to a specific um, sub-object itself. So in this case, I want to constrain these vertices along the edge. So under my edit geometry rollout, I have constraints. If I turn on edge and I move these vertices, notice what happens they begin to move out and across the top it's staying perfectly in line with that topology. Now the one issue that I have here is that I have some polygons that are not wanting to come across and that's because they've run out of room along the edge. So this may not always work but I'm giving you a good idea of when this uh, is going to be appropriate. So let's turn off our constraints. Let's hit none and let's deselect these at the top. So I'm going to hold down alt and then deselect those. I'm going to move these back just a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to take these at the top and I'm going to switch those constraints to edge and then pull that across. And we'll try to get that as straight as possible. Now if I go to my front view by hitting F, I can select that entire line of vertices and I can ensure that that's going to be perfectly straight by using the Make Planar tool. Now Make Planar is a great way to clean up your your segments. Now the direction that we want to clean this up is going to be in our X direction. Now again we want to make sure that we have our edge constraint on because even if I uh, hit make planar in my X direction it could uh, adjust that topology and we don't want that. So I'm going to hit X and make planar and we were pretty close to begin with so I think we're good here. So now that we have those uh, perfectly straight, we've got everything set up. We've got the uh, truck mounts ready, and we've extruded that out. Now let's talk about how to extrude out the top rim of the dumpster. First thing that we need to do is create the segments across there. Now one way that we could go about doing this is by going to edge mode, selecting this edge, and hitting ring, and we could use connect to create a segment that goes across the top. So to do this, we'll go ahead and we'll hit connect, and then we can use slide to push that further or closer to the top there. So we'll do something like so. But one thing that I want you to notice is it's pretty close to this edge, but it's a different distance from this edge up here. And that's not something that I really want. So what I could do is go ahead and just hit OK on that. And if I go to my front view by hitting F, you can definitely see that distance change there. What I could do is rotate those edges and with constraints still turned on I can even that out. So let me change this from local to view and let's rotate that around. Now as I rotate that notice how it's just moving that edge across that topology. Now it's snapping and it's not giving me the exact angle that I need so I'm going to turn off my angle snap and rotate that around and try to get the exact angle that I need there. So this is very very close and I like the distance from here to here so I know that that's pretty even. Now if I want to I could pull that up a little bit closer so that way I don't have quite as much rim there across the top of my dumpster. Alright so now I have these edges. Now what I need to do is I need to create the lip off of that uh, that dumpster there. So I could come in and go to polygon mode and I could select the polygons all the way around. Okay, and I can extrude those out. So let's go ahead and select all of those. 
and let's hit extrude. Now let's make sure that we use the extrude settings and one thing that I want you to notice is the overall extrusion. Um, it hasn't extruded properly. You'll notice that it's kind of cutting into the model in almost all the directions except for this direction here. And it's not giving us the best results. So what is happening here? Well, we are extruding with multiple polygons. And whenever we're extruding with multiple polygons, we need to make sure that we're paying attention to our extrusion type. Now right now, our extrusion type is set to group. If I click on this, you can see that I can choose from group, local normal, and by polygon. These will all affect how your um, objects extrude. So if I go to local normal, you'll notice that they extrude out in their own local normal direction. And this is getting us closer to what we want. Now, uh, to kind of just finish this off, let's take a look at by polygon and see what that does. This will separate the polygons and extrude those straight out. Okay. Now, these are not grouped together, and so you want to be careful uh, when using this. Um, this is extremely helpful if you want to create something like um, you know, multiple polygons that are together and you want to create something kind of like a, a spiked ball or something like that. Um, but anyway, looking at this, local normal was pretty close to what we wanted. Okay, it keeps things grouped together and extrudes those out in their own local direction. But the problem with this is you'll notice that it's not keeping those angles that we want for our rim. If we take a look at our front view, you can see that it's kind of extruding upward here and then down here, and that's not exactly what we want. So wh what do we do about this? How do we get around this problem? Well, it's important to remember that the extrude tool uh, does work pretty well in most cases, but whenever we have diagonal angles like this on a model, it can produce some unexpected results. Now, we can still use the extrude tool to fix this issue, we just have to use it in a different way. So instead of extruding everything all at the same time, how about we extrude just specific sides? So in this case, I'm going to take this edge right here, and this edge, or this side, I should say, and let's extrude those straight out. So if I hit extrude settings, those will extrude straight out they will not be influenced by the other polygons. So let me take my extrusion height down and let's go to something around 2. Okay, we want a little bit of a lip there, not a very large lip. Let's hit OK on that. And now we have the ability to select all of these polygons across the front, okay, as well as the back. and we can extrude those out. Now this is going to be a little bit trickier because you can see that they come straight out in both directions. Now that's okay. Let's go ahead and hit OK on this and we can straighten these out manually. So looking at our front view you can see that this comes straight out. What we want it to do is continue with this angle. So let's go to vertex mode and I'm going to select just these vertices right here along the edge and I'm going to pull that up. Now you'll notice that it's not allowing me to pull the top edge up. And the reason for that is because we still have the constraints turned on. Let's switch that to none and pull that up. So there we have our angle there. And let's take this and pull our angle down. Alright, so now we have our lip for our dumpster. And we're starting to get those larger forms. So now that we've talked about how to use the extrude tool, and we've, we've covered pretty much everything that we could cover with the extrude tool. The uh, preparing of polygons before you extrude, um, how to um, extrude those out using the extrusion types, and what those types do exactly, and how to fix any issues whenever extruding. So now what we're going to do is we're going to move into our next section where we're going to continue to extrude, but we're going to extrude in a different way. Instead of creating um, shapes that come out, let's create shapes that actually push into an object. So we'll start with that next.